approach number three is to think about, like we thought first about the letter D, right? And then here we tried to think about them together, right? Did you notice, like when I said this, this bit here, for case one over here, once you place the letter D, um, N can be anywhere. It's kind of like one of the other guys, okay? Well, I'm going to try and tr take a similar approach to positioning the letter D. Let's just say D can be anywhere. In fact, it's kind of what we did with approach one, right? It's like, I can put D wherever I like. So therefore, if I treat D as a regular letter, we'll leave N for a second. If I treat D as a regular letter, how many ways are there to place D and all of the normal letters? There are eight factorial, right? So you've got your first, the first box that you've got there, right? You might have, um, it's a bit hard to notice because at a glance, eight and nine look the same, okay? You've got eight slots there, okay? So first, I'm just going to place all these other letters, right? So place eight letters, including the letter D, okay? So this is eight factorial ways. Now, Having a look at the next bit there. The letter M now has to go in somewhere, okay? How many spots can it go? Well, what you can do is you can take your letter M, right? Let's just say this is your letter M, and you can just kind of jam it in somewhere in this existing word, right? So it's like I could put it here on the end, or I could like jam it right here in the middle, or wherever I like, okay? Now you can see what the next diagram is. There are nine of these spots in which I could place that letter in. Does that make sense? And I've put them in as those gray one to nine. Okay. So I could put it in any one of those spots. Kind of, right? I actually can't put it in any of those spots because based on where D is, this is very similar to this guy over here, based on where D is, some of those spots will not meet my condition. Okay. So when you have a look, remember, remember, there are eight factorial ways here. So D can be in eight spots. Do you see how it's similar to this? Here we were like, oh, there are nine spots, but one of them ends up being a dud. Well, here, there are only eight spots for the D to go into, right? So that's fine. Now, some of them are okay for M, and some of them are not. Now, I'm just gonna use this because um, it'll take me too long to draw, and you've already got it. Have a look at this, right? D can be in any one of those eight spots, but depending on where D is, that makes some spots okay and some spots not okay, for M, does that make sense? So you can see over here, this is kind of another way of approaching number one, right? Uh, I know you would not have to draw this, uh, but I just want to illustrate for you so you can see it in front of you, right? Depending on where D is, you'll have these spots in green that are acceptable for M. And once you place it like this, in the same way that I argued from symmetry here, clearly the spots for M that are okay exactly match the number of spots for M that aren't okay. Half a good, <coughs> half a bad, right? So that's another way for me to be able to say, okay, we get all the spots. This is all the spots, right? But I only want half of them, okay? You can see this is a totally different way of establishing what's going on versus this, right? The argument is quite different, but I still arrive at the same answer. Because if D is in the 8th position in my original 8 spots, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So if D is there, well, I can always put M like right on the end. Okay, I can always do that because it will be to the right of D, wherever D might be, which is why it's always in green. Okay? So, uh, maybe instead of, uh, maybe you don't have green, maybe you can just put ticks on these ones so you can see. Like you can make your visual argument for why it's half, half. Um, well, you've placed D, right? The white are the boxes where the original eight letters are, right? Remember you placed um, all of the letters except for N, right? You placed all of them, and we said, well, there's eight factorial ways for all of these guys to be filled in. I just haven't written what those letters are because they could be anything, right? But based on where D is, that tells you you can put N in these spots in between or in these spots, etc. Okay? So your for D, for N rather, you're thinking about these gaps. Remember? Right? You've positioned all of the other letters. Let me just give you an example. Uh, let's talk about the first one, right? So you've got um, well let's just write 
decisions without an M, right? So it'll look like this. Okay, like that. And then now I ask the question, well, where would you like N to go? Where would you like N to go, right? And, and I can say, well, I can, I can stick N in there. Oh. That would be gap number one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four. That's the fourth gap over there. Or I could stick N there or there. The only place I can't stick N is here. I can't do that because it wouldn't satisfy my condition. Okay, which is why one, position one, or gap one rather, is never green. It'll never be an option. Okay. Now, um, how do you sort of flex your muscles for, for thinking like this? Um, my advice is whenever you get, like these are for questions with conditions, they're the ones that trick you, right? As much as possible, when you do a question, don't just arrive at a number and it's the same as the um, textbook. Do the question again. At least, there's usually at least one other way you could think about this problem, okay? And if you start to not just solve it and then move on, like this is the first solution I can arrive at, if you can come up with the same number in another way, by noticing patterns like this, you look at a number you're like, huh, why is that, right? Um, that will help you. Like noticing that this was half is what gave me the other two arguments, right? The other two ways to approach it.